How's it going guys? Uh, Matt Monroe here. Uh, basically what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be doing a video on an introduction to the Valpine Mark II from Ludicrous Lumens and also a sort of basic sort of setup guide for it. A uh, few people struggled with the Mark I in setting it up uh, so hopefully this will this will help you out in getting the Mark II set up probably. So before we even go into any of that, there's one thing that I would like to sort of cover and that is your scope choice. Uh, general rule of thumb with all these digital rear add-ons that your big brand sort of uh, European kind of scopes, they're not going to get you a good image. Uh, you will get an image through them, but it, it wouldn't sort of fulfill the full potential of the unit. So Swarovski, uh, Schmidt & Bender, Zeiss, Carlos, all that kind of scopes, pretty much out the window, out of the question. So scopes you should be looking for, um, if you want a sort of higher, higher end, cheaper scope, sort of mid ranger, you could call it um, Cytron S Tax if you can find one. Um, Cytrons unfortunately stopped making the S Tax range, it seems, so maybe a bit harder to come by. Um, Hawk, very good performance, um, good price as well, and you get a great image. Um, MTC, one of the best actually uh, that I've found. Um, uh, Optizan, the EVX range, I've heard good things, I haven't actually tried that myself yet, um, but I've heard good reports from them. And Bushnell Elites, they're seemingly very good as well. So there is a good selection of good performing scopes out there that will work extremely well with your digital rear add ons. So moving on from that, We'll just go straight into the sort of introduction to the, the Vulpine and that's it there. So, cracking wee unit, um, looks very well made, uh, solid, it's, it's not heavy, um, but it's not what I would call super light, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good, very good. Um, finish on it's really nice. So. Going to the features of it, they're very, very simple. So you've got a simple on-off button at the front here. So you can click it on, click it off. Um, on the left-hand side of the unit, you've got a brightness control setting. So you've got the minus and the plus. That just controls the, the brightness of the screen. Once you've selected your brightness, and then if you were to turn the unit off, it will remember what your last setting was. So you don't need to change that again um, if you're happy with what you've chosen. On the other side of the unit you've got a charging port and then you've got your RCA video output. Um, video output obviously for connecting an external DVR if you wanted to, to record what you're shooting at. Um, you also get three shims, spacers, shims, whatever you want to call them. I've, well, one's on my rifle just now so that's why I've only two in my hand. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. I mean, we're looking at a very complete, well-made unit, I think. So, we'll move straight on to the setup. Now, this is where the part where everybody seems to get thrown, but it really is dead simple. So, the first thing you want to do is, I've already done it for video purposes, but on the back of the unit, on there, you will find a faceplate with a fox's head on it. So, if you remove that, there's the three very small screws. You remove those screws. Now, when I say very small, they are small. So, if you've got fat fingers, you may struggle, and I would suggest that uh, you do it over a, a big table or a hard floor. Don't do it over carpet, because if you drop them and you've got quite deep pile on your carpet, the screws will disappear. So, anyway, if you remove those screws, and then that will show you the rear sort of housing of the camera. Now on the top right hand side of that rear housing, up in there, you'll see a wee joystick. So what you want to do is push that joystick in, sorry actually, turn the unit on first would always be a good start. So turn the unit on, look through it, press that little joystick in. Now I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but in there you can see a menu screen that comes up. So now you've got that menu screen up, whilst looking through the unit, 
what you want to do is take the sort of focus wheel on the eyepiece of the valve pipe and just rotate it until the image that you're seeing, so the wording on the menu is as big and as crisp as possible. So basically you're focusing the menu to your, to your vision. Once that's done, that's that part done. It's, it is that simple for the first part of the process. So you can then stick your back plate back on it, put your screws in, don't over tighten them, they don't need to be, you know, screwed in like a madman. Um, just screw them in so it's, it's snug. Right, now the second part of the setup is basically, um, well, I've already, yet again, set this little belt up here. I've found the shim that fits my, my scope and the Valpine nicely. I've put a, a whip of tape, insulation tape, around the, the ocular bell of my scope just to allow the, the shim to get a good grip when it's tightened down. And then I've also put a uh, a single whip of tape around the outside of the shim just to hold the shim on. So it becomes like a bayonet thing then, but not quite. Um, so what you want to do then anyway is obviously make sure that your crosshairs are focused for your eye for daytime use. So what you do is you open up your valpine, slide it on to your shim, turn the unit on and have a look through it. Now if your crosshairs are already sharp, then great. I mean, you don't need to do anything. That's that's it, pretty much. But if they're blurred, which mine aren't, because I've already set mine up, but uh, if you find that yours are blurred, what you need to do is get a pair of pointy nose pliers. Now, wrap some insulation tape around the ends of them, like that, because you're going to have to move the lens of the camera, which is located inside the tube there, hopefully you can see that. So basically what you want to do is carefully grip this, say my finger is the whole end of the lens, you want to grip either side of the lens like that and then just rotate it. Um, probably a quarter of a turn. Once you've rotated it a quarter of a turn, offer it back up to your scope again have a look through it and see if your crosshairs have got any sharper. If they have got sharper, but they're not still sh fully sharp, then rotate it a bit more. Same process over again. Have it off and up again. Have another look. Yep, okay, they're getting even better now. So then just basically keep tweaking it a tiny bit at a time until you get the crosshairs nice and sharp and focus. That way, when you're moving from like daytime use of your rifle scope and then you can just put this straight on at night there's no messing about, there's no changing uh, changing your diopter on your scope to get the focus of the crosshairs again it's all done, ready. So basically that's it, I mean it's done, it's set up. Uh, oh, uh, one other thing that I would like to say as well is when you're putting your Valpine on uh, the camera inside the Valpine itself is basically your eye, so eye relief is important. You, d you don't want to have it shoved right on so that the, the camera's hard up against the scope lens because you're only going to get a small field of view. So just basically slide the Valpine on, on and off, and well, not right off, but uh, just to a point where you feel, whilst looking through it, you're, you're getting the full image. Once you hit that point, that's when you want to tighten it up. So, anyway, I hope this has helped. Um, not much more to say about it, really. Uh, yeah, cool. Enjoy yourselves, shoot straight, have fun, be safe.